Hello guys today we are going to start the second part of the chapter animal kingdom of 11th biology that is chapter number 4 in this video we will be discussing all the non chordic members of the animal kingdom in the first video we discussed about the protozoa and we also discussed the characters on which the complete classification of animal kingdom is given how different phyla are actually formed and now we'll be studying all the phyla which are actually included in this group non chordata now before moving towards the different phyla let me introduce you with the reason why we call them as non chordates or the group non chordata these members do not have a notochord present in them notochord will be present only in the members of the chordate group or chordata group so all those animals which do not have the notochord present in them will be included in the non chordata group what is notochord what are the other characters of chordata we'll be studying this in the next video where we'll be discussing all the chordate members so these non chordate members are also known as lower animals means as the evolution started the evolution of animals or the members of the animal kingdom starting with the porifera these all are known as lower animals means up to you can say starting from the porifera and as we move to the other phyla like cilantrates then platyhelminthes nematelminthes annelida arthropoda so these all which we are studying in the non chordate phyla they all are actually the lower animals so we'll see all the phyla which plays here in the non chordates one by one now is the first phyla we have got is porifera now these members are also known as sponges the common name is sponges these are usually marine generally marine now for exams point of view these words like general mostly such words plays more importance as compared to their actual character so remember they are generally marine not all the members of the porifera are marine because in exams when we uh, go completely prepared will remember that the porifera are marines but are they all marines or are they generally marines will get confused between these two parts and that's where the question is formed so remember they are generally marine they are not always marine mostly asymmetrical means we cannot divide we cannot cut a porifera into two equal halves usually it's not always it's not necessary in all these are the primitive multicellular animals means here they just have the aggregation of cells hence cellular level of organization is there no tissue formation no organ formation is there in this members of the porifera then they have diploblastic germ layers diploblastic means if only and only ectoderm and endoderm will be present and in between that some undifferentiated cells will be there that is the mesoglea mesoderm is absent we have discussed these terms in our first video of this chapter if you haven't watched that i'll share the link in my description you go and watch that too so the diploblastic germ layers means the ectoderm and endoderm will be there mesoglea in between ectoderm and endoderm now since these are diploblastic we will not talk about the slum in these porifera members right next they have one characteristic feature which i am going to star mark over here yes they have this canal system or water transport system water transport system which is asked in the exams a number of times and we usually get confused with this water transport system because further in the non chordate itself we'll see one more system that is in the echinodermates i'm giving you just a small hint about it 
So in the, uh, usually the students do get confused between these two systems. So remember, the porifera have this water transport system, which actually helps to transport the nutrition to the complete body, the gases exchange to the complete body, excretory material to the like uh, is sent through this water transport system. So no specific organs are there for respiration, circulation, etc. They just have this water transport system. Water enters the body. Just moves to the complete body within the complete body and exits out of the body. Now, how this water enters, how it exits, we'll see now. So, a single body of the porifera is there. Suppose my this thumb is a porifera. So, in this porifera, the inner cavity, the inner space is actually known as spongocele or paragastric cavity. Okay, so the space or the complete Cavity within the porifera is given this word spongocil or paragastric cavity. Now, the porifera will have a number of mouths present in them. And mouths are for what? Mouths are for inlets, right? So, this is the porifera. All these, so many pores will be there. And these, all the pores will just help for the inlets of the water, inlets of the food material with the water. And these various entry points are given the word ostia. So numerous, many number ostia are present, but they have just one exit point. So many pores to allow entry of water, but only one pore which allows exit of water. And that pore is actually known as osculum. So, numerous ostia and one osculum is there. We can remember like this. What is the function of ostia? Mouth. So, ostia we can call it as mouth and osculum as anus. In our higher animals, we can compare it with like that. Now, coming to the next point, which is a characteristic feature of the porifera again, that is the presence of flagellated coenocytes, also known as collar cells. This is the characteristic feature and important point for the porifera. These coenocytes have various functions and are present in the different, different forms. Coming to the digestion of these porifera members means what happens to the food they intake with the help of water. That food get digested within the cells. So we call it as intracellular digestion. Now, coming to the skeleton type means how the skeletal system is for the porifera members. So they have the spicules and spongin fiber. In your answer, you will get spicules and spongin fibers. Two types of spicules are there. One is calcareous spicules and another one is siliceous spicules. Calcareous means mainly made up of calcium carbonate and siliceous means made up of silica. So these spicules and spongin fiber will form the skeletal system of the porifera members. Coming to the next point is excretory matter. Since these porifera are aquatic, they will mostly or they will excrete the material in which form? In the form of ammonia. Ammonia out of all the uh, nitrogen excretory materials, they, it requires highest amount of water for excretion. And the ammonia will be, this ammonia matter will be the excretory matter only in the case of aquatic animals that you can mark as a key point guys further in the excretory system chapter also human physiology you will see this point again next coming to the nervous system they do not have any form of nervous system and these are actually the hermaphrodites hermaphrodites means what hermaphrodites means here the males and females will not be separate Female reproductive structure and male reproductive structure will be present in the single body. And the spermatozoa and ova will be formed by these single porifera individuals only. Now, the next we have is asexual reproduction where the gametes fusion does not take place. And it is usually seen by the fragmentation or budding in the porifera. 
Next is sexual reproduction that takes place by gametes formation. Cross internal fertilization. Now the word cross means end of one porifera will be fusing with the sperm of another porifera. Because all the poriferas are hermaphrodites but they will not lead to the fusion of the gametes from the same body. Ag will come from one porifera and the sperm will come from the another porifera. This is cross fertilization and the fertilization takes place within the body. Hence we call it as internal fertilization. So we can say that it is a cross internal fertilization. Next is indirect development. Indirect development means in the complete life cycle, there will be a larval stage where larva is actually different from the adults. Different in what way? Different in the morphology, morphological way. Its looks, structure, everything, it will be different from the adults. And the most common one which you all know first is the frogs and the tadpoles. Tadpole is actually a larva of frog. Then we have the caterpillars and butterflies. So caterpillar is different and butterfly is different, completely different, right? But you know what caterpillar converts into butterfly. So like that, in the porifera also, they do have larvas like empiblastula, parenchymula, serogastrula. These are the different types of larva found in the different porifera members. These will be morphologically different from their parents or the adults. Then we have some important exam examples from the exam's point of view. The first one is Sycan. Sycan also known as Kypha or urn sponge. Then we have a spongula. The spongula is known as fresh water sponge. Then we have a use spongula that is bath sponge. Then we have is leucosolania and it is the smallest porifera we have. Then is Euplactella, which is known as Venus flower basket. And it is actually used as bridal gift in Japan. Because of its, uh, we can say, flower basket-like structure, it is given to the brides in Japan. Next is Hyalonema and it is known also known as glass rope sponge. So we have these three pictures in front of us which are very very important for the exams. The first one belongs to Euspongia. What is this Euspongia? The second one is Spongula. Spongula. And the first one we have got is Sycan. So all these black spots what you are seeing are actually the ostea, the entry points or the mouths of the porifera. Now we have got some more facts about the members of the porifera. So let's see those facts about the members of the porifera. So first is Proterospongia. Proterospongia is actually the connecting link between protozoa and porifera. In my first video of this chapter, means part one of this chapter, I told you how the protozoa are similar to the animals, even though they belong to the kingdom protista. So the proterospongia are the ancestors or connecting link. Then we have a species spongia, which is the largest spawns we have, the largest porifera member. And then the shrimps have some commensalism uh, relationship with Euplactella. Euplactella is a porifera member which have this commensalism with shrimps where one is benefited and another one does not get any benefits, but it does not get harmed also. So this is all about the porifera we have got. Next we have is the next phylum that is cylindrata. The cylindrata is also known as cnidaria. Now these are all aquatic members and mostly they are marine. Means no terrestrial members are found in these individuals. Next is they are diploblastic with radial symmetry. 
Now, diploblastic beings again they will have just two layers of the tissues, uh, tissue layer, germ layers that is ectoderm and endoderm, and they will have radial symmetry. Means we will we can cut body into two equal halves by a number of planes. Then there is tissue level of organization. Means now they will have the formation of tissues, and then the cells will aggregate to form a. This structure that is known as tissue. They have these medocytes uh, or medoblasts, or tentacles and body. As you can see, this is one medoblast, medocyte or medoblast we have. These are present on the tentacles and body, and hence the name given as medaria. Because they have these medocytes on them, they are given the same medaria. They have the central gast central gastrovascular cavity in them, and here in this gastrovascular cavity, the circulation occurs plus the digestion also occurs. Hence the name. They have a single opening that is mouth on the hypostome, and they have this blind sac present in them. Blind sac means incomplete digestive tract will be there. And what will be absent here? The anus will be absent. Only opening will be there. Or one point of entry or exit will be there, like this, right? So this is blind sac, where only one point or one opening is there. One opening is there. That's how you can remember this point. Next is the digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. That is, it can occur out of the cells also, and it can occur within the cell also. Next is skeleton. So, in the members of cellulose, they have skeleton made up of calcium carbonate in some of the members that is forming the corals. So, if you go to some seashores or beaches, you will see those beautiful corals. They are actually. Made up of cellulose, which have this deposition of calcium carbonate in them. You might have seen, even if not in real, in the movies, definitely in the pictures, definitely. So that is the formed by these cellulose members, where the deposition of calcium carbonate is there. Next is excretory material. Since they are aquatic, you won't have to learn this point again once you. Concept is clear about the excretory material type that if the organism is aquatic. It is going to excrete ammonia because it will have lots of water. So ammonia is the excretory matter. Coming to the next point, this nervous system. So they have loose network of nerve fibers. Means now in the porifera, no nervous system was there. No nerves were there. But now in cilantrata, there are some specific nerves present which are forming a close of. Uh, Loose network, and they have some non-polar neurons plus sensory cells present in them. So now, slowly and slowly, more sense organs are developing. Brain is forming, forming, right? Next is these cilantrata have two forms actually. One is polyp, and another one is medusa. So polyp is actually a sessile means it is a stable one. It will not move from one place to another. Hence, we call it a sessile. It will remain attached to the substratum. It will remain attached to the surface where it is present. It will not move from one place to another. Its shape is cylindrical. As you can see, this first picture. This is of polyp, and here you can see that this is a cylindrical kind of structure. Where these numbers are present at the substratum only, and as you can see, we can divide, we can cut them into two equal halves. Now, if you take a cylinder, you can cut into two different, two equal halves, but different, different planes, right? So, we are uh, different, different axes to be more exact. So, examples here of polyp are hydra and adansia. Examples definitely important for your exams. Next is another form that is medusa. This medusa is the free living form. Free living form, they move from one place to another, and then they move. They look very, very beautiful. I've seen not in the real, but in the movies and the TV. So they move like this. Very, very beautiful looks they give. They are umbrella shaped. As you can see, this one. 
and the example is Aurelia or jellyfish. You might have seen jellyfish were definite, right, in the movies or TV or aquarium somewhere at least. And those movements I really like a lot. They move very beautifully. So this is one Medusa we have, and this is how the polyps have their structure in general. Some of the numbers are there where the conversion of polyp and Medusa in, is found in a same organism. So these organisms are said to have alternation of generation. Alternation of generation, we can also call it as metagenesis. And it is found in the numbers like Obelia, which is commonly known as Seifert. What happens here? Here in the Obelia, they will have both the stages present in them. That is polyp also and Medusa convert into Medusa or form Medusa by asexual reproduction and Medusa convert into polyps by sexual reproduction. So this point is important regarding the conversion of the two stages or two forms. So let's write this point over here itself. Polyps will form Medusa by what type of reproduction? By asexual reproduction and Medusa will form the polyps by sexual reproduction. Right? Next is indirect development. So here in the members of the cylindrates, they have the larval stages present. So the stage is there where the adults and the young ones are completely different. Then we have this planula which is a free living member and it is known as Obelia. Then we have is Ephyra which is also known as Aurelia. Then we have is Physalia which is known as Portuguese man of war. Adensia sea anemone, Paratula sea pan, Gorgonia sea fan, Meandria brain corals. So these are some important examples which you need to learn for these members of this phylum. Now the spectra which you can see here, this is the Aurelia and it is of which form or which generation of the uh, these cylindrates. It is actually the Medusa type and the next one we have got is Adentia which is actually the polyp. So these are the two important diagram pictures which you need to remember. Next is, next uh, phylum number three that is Chinophora. These Chinophora members are given some more names that is sea walnuts, corn jellies or sea gooseberries. So these are some common names given to it and then more is there that is Acnidaria. Because here they do not have nidoblasts present in them, so they are known as Acnidaria. This phylum is a minor phylum, thus all the phyla which we will be uh, studying in the animal diversity are major phyla. But Tenophora is the only phyla which is actually a minor phyla. So all the members of the Tenophora are marine. So if the question asks some are marine, generally they are marine, no. They all are marine. They are diploblastic, means ectoderm, endoderm is present with radial symmetry. They have visual level of organization. These are the characters same as cylindrates. I am not repeating the explanations again and again. Next is, they have eight external rows of ciliary complates for locomotion. So just like this, ciliary complates are there. I will show you one of the members picture also. Like this, eight rows of ciliary complates are there which actually help in locomotion to move from one place to another. They have both extracellular and intracellular digestion. These members are actually pelagic which means that they are found usually on the sea surface or water surface. Next is they do not have any skeleton present in them and they show bioluminescence means they glow in the dark. Like we saw in the algae or these cyanobacteria, these xenophora also glow in the dark. These are bisexual animals and they do not have asexual production in them. They 
have external fertilization means the fertilization between the egg and the sperm occurs out of the body they have this indirect development where a larva named as cdpd larva is involved remember the name of the larva and they show regeneration and pedogenesis regeneration means any part of the body will form a complete organism that is known as regeneration and pedogenesis where larva attains sexual maturity pedogenesis means what the larva attains sexual maturity and here we are done with the important characters of the tenophora members now we have some examples of the tenophora members that is pleurobranchia tenoplana then we have a system that is also known as renus girdle and the fourth one we have is biroi and this picture which you can see here is actually of the pleurobranchia we can see that these ciliary helix structures are present which help for the locomotion so this is all about the third phylum we have got now we have the fourth phylum that is platyhelminthes these platyhelminthes are actually also known as flat worms because of their structure now these are known as flat worms because of their dorso ventral flattened body the body of the platyhelminthes is completely flattened like this so we call them as flat worms and most of them are endoparasites causing a number of diseases in various animals not only humans but in dogs sheep etc they cause a number of diseases next is they have triploblastic or these members are triploblastic with bilateral symmetry triploblastic means now all the three germ layers will be present ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm will be there bilateral symmetry means we can divide body into two equal halves with one axis or with one plane only and these members are acelomates acelomates means they will not have cilom present in them even though they are triploblastic they will not have the body cavity lined by mesoderm we have discussed the three types of cilomates that is acelomates pseudocilomates and eucelomates in our part first of this chapter next is they have organ level of organization means now they will have formation of organs by combination of various tissues they do not have any locomotory organs for locomotion they do not have any organ since most of the members are actually the parasites they don't have to uh, obtain or acquire any of the locomotory organs like the uh, moving organs and these will have hooks and suckers to attach to the parasite to uh, means to attach to the host body actually because these are parasites so they will need hooks and suckers uh, so that they can attach to the parasites next is regarding the nervous system so they have this ladder like nervous system which has nerve rings present in them so like this ladder like nerve uh, these nervous system will be there and around that a uh, nerve rings will be there now next is for the excretion and osmoregulation they have characteristic structures which are known as flame cells and i'm star marking this because it is an important point for two chapters one is animal diversity and another one is excretion chapter and these flame cells are also known as protonephridia or solenocytes they have anaerobic respiration when they are present in the form of parasites so if there is any parasite within the body it is not going to respire with oxygen it is going to respire without the oxygen these are also bisexual members with internal fertilization means fertilization will occur within the body the male and female gamete will fuse within the body of the female and next is indirect development is there plus they have high regeneration capacity 
indirect development means larva will be there as we know we have been seeing indirect development in all the phyla till now now the next we have is some examples of these platyhelminthes that is digesia which is also known as planaria peciola which is also known as liver fluke and it causes liver rot or cirrhosis then we have a stenia which is also known as safe form and now we have two pictures which are important for the exam the first one is of liver fluke so the first one is of tape worm that is tenia and different species of tenia are there like tenia solium tenia saginata that is known as beef uh tape worm then we have is the second picture that is of the liver fluke that is speciola so remember these examples these pictures next we have is sk helminthes sk helminthes are also known as nematode helminthes or nematoda members these are round worm structures they have if we see the cross section of the sk helminthes members they will have this round cross section now they are free living means they will be independent of other organisms and can be found in the water or terrestrial means on land they can be parasites also that is in plants or animals now they have the triploblastic body with bilateral symmetry triploblastic means what triploblastic means three germ layers will be there what are they let's recall again and uh, we have been talking about the three germ layer again and again so i hope by now you have learned the three germ layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm bilateral symmetry with one plane we will be able to divide them into two equal halves they are pseudo salomates pseudo salomates means what they will have the salom cavity but it will not be lined completely by the mesoderm so we call them as pseudo salomate members they have tapering at both ends without segmentation so i'll show you how they look like sk helminthes have body in this form like this where they are tapering at the ends like this they will be so these ants are tapering and they are without segmentation no segmentations are there in the body next is they have tube within tube plan tube within tube plan means what they will have complete digestive system with mouth and anus so two openings of the digestive tract will be there hence we call it as tube within tube plan next is they have this muscular pharynx so the digestive system is complete digestive tract is complete with muscular pharynx my pharynx means which will contract relax to engulf the food particles next is they have excretory tube so complete excretory system is not there but they have excretory tube which is known as protonephridia or rennet cell so this is another important point i'm putting star mark on it then we have excretory matter so it is usually ammonia and the members are dioecious means now male and female bodies will be different male sk helminthes will be different female sk helminthes will be different they have internal fertilization that is within the female body fertilization will occur the development can be direct or indirect direct will be means there will be no larval stages the zygote will form embryo embryo will convert into adult whereas if indirect development is there what will be formed larva will be formed then we have another new term here what is uteli so uteli means the number of the segments will be same once the body is formed so a fixed number of cells a fixed number of segments are there sorry a fixed number of cells are there in the sk helminthes after which there is no more addition within the body just they grow no more addition in the number is there next is the examples of sk helminthes and the first one we have got is ascaris that is also known as round worm then we have as bucheria which is known as filarial worm or filaria worm it causes 
filariasis or elephantiasis disease which you will be studying in a 12th portion disease chapter filariasis where the lymph uh, gets blocked or the lymph vessels get blocked and swelling occurs the legs become these elephant type you can even search it you will see that so thick legs are there then we uh, have is encyclostoma which is known as hookworm because of its hook like structure like this it is hook like structure then we have an interesting example that is loa loa which is known as eye worm so guys in bollywood there is a song and movie ish and the uh, song is like mr loa loa teri aankhon ka jaadu so i guess the musician and the everyone like who wrote the song knew about this worm actually and that's why he told about loa loa and its eye worm or the disease in eye causing nature something like that so with the song you can remember the first one is actually the male round worm and the second one we have is female round worm so now you will be just thinking how do we get to know which one is male and which one is female so there is simple way of finding out which one is male and which one is female guys the smaller one is male and the larger one is female actually so in case of sk helminthes males are always smaller this is male and females are always larger so this is female round worm this is male round worm clear that's all you need to remember for sk helminthes now we'll move to the next phylum where we have friend of farmers now in your junior classes you have been studying he is known as or it is known as friends of farmer so who is known as friends of farmer let's say who is known as friends of farmer the answer is earthworm so next phyla includes earthworm in it so we have is anelida now this anelida members can be aquatic also or terrestrial also means they can be found in the water bodies or they can be found on the land also they can be free living or parasitic means either they will be depending on the host or they will be just living in the soil or in the water they are triploblastic with bilateral symmetry they have organ system level of organization means now different organs are going to work together to form a single system that is known as organ system now these members are known as eucelomates eucelomates means true celom cavity will be there and the cavity will be lined by what cavity will be lined by mesoderm in the members next is they have metameric segmentation so in the body of earthworm specific segments are there where the repetition of the organs are there some of the organs are there and hence we call it as metameric segmentation characteristic feature of the media sorry anelidia then we have is longitudinal and circular muscles for locomotion so if you have ever seen earthworm in the soil it moves like this contraction relaxation like this it is like uh, the longitudinal and the circular muscles present in the earthworm is actually helping for the locomotion they have parapodia for swimming so uh, one of the member like nereis which is aquatic in nature will have specific structures which are known as parapodia these are very small leg like structures which are found in the aquatic anelidia members aquatic anelidia members we have one standard example that is nereis next is circulatory system so now these members have closed circulatory system closed circulatory system means what the blood will be flowing within the blood vessels till the, all the organs will not be bathing within the blood like we have closed uh, circulatory system where blood vessels are there in any lidia also blood will be flowing within the vessels only and will transport the gases and all to the different body parts food material and all next is digestive tract is complete and they have respiration by skin or gills gills is present in the aquatic members 
on terrestrial so means in terrestrial mammals they will have respiration by skin next is osmoregulation and excretion by structures which are known as nephridia so this nephridia is a characteristic feature of these mammals of the annelida the mammals which are aquatic will have the ammonia as excretory matter whereas those living on land will have urea urea is another nitrogenous waste material which is excreted by the animals and it is excreted mainly by the land animals now next is they have lateral nerves which are connected by paired ganglia to double ventral nerve cord and these mammals are dioecious means males and females are different for example in case of nereids whereas they can be monoecious also where males and female reproductive structures will be present within the same organism for example as seen in earthworm and leeches here sexual reproduction is seen and some of the members have larval stage present in their life cycle and the name of the larva is trochophore larva so trochophore is actually the name of the larva which is found in the members of annelida next we have we have some examples of annelida like nereids paratima which is commonly known as earthworm the friend of the farmers and hirudinaria which is known as blood sucking leech why these paratima are known as earth uh, friends of farmers because they help in the aeration of the soil they help to increase fertility of the soil now here we have two pictures which are important for example the first one is of nereids and the second one is of hirudinaria that is leech now we have got the next phylum that is arthropoda arthropoda members or uh, this phylum is the largest phylum we have got which includes insects insects form 70% of all the animals found on this earth and now these are actually the triploblastic with bilateral symmetry as i told you earlier that the higher animals will be having the triploblastic arrangement with bilateral symmetry they have organ system level of organization they are coelomate with segmentation here metamorphic segmentation is not there but segmentation is found in the arthropod members they have chitinous exoskeleton means they have the outer layer or chitin as outer layer of the body next is they have the body divided into three regions head thorax and abdomen so body is divided into three regions they have jointed appendages means they will have the limbs joint with each other which is another characteristic feature of arthropoda they have various respiratory organs depending on the different types of the members like they have gills for the aquatic arthropods they have book gills book lungs tracheal system for the land arthropods they have open circulatory system the blood will not flow into specific vessels it will just flow within the body and providing the nutrition gases to the nutrition and gases to the different organs they do have various sensory organs like antenna eyes statuses or balance organs they have antennary or also known as green glands also known as maxillary glands and these are actually the structures which help for excretion now next is they are aquatic then they will secrete or excrete ammonia and if they are land ones then they will excrete uric acid they have double solid mid ventral nerve cord with a pair of ganglia in almost every segment most of them are dioecious means if we talk about cockroaches then male cockroach and female cockroach are different 
usually they will have internal fertilization and they are oviparous oviparous means what they will lay fertilized eggs so fusion of male and female gamete occurs within the female body but after this fertilization a fertilized egg will be released by the female and this is known as the oviparous nature then we have is they have direct or indirect development means some of the members will have the larval stages as i gave you the example of butterfly the butterfly is a member of arthropods and they have these larval stages whereas if we talk about direct development then we can talk about the cockroaches mosquitoes mosquito larvas are there so they will have indirect development cockroaches are there which have direct development next is successful invaders of land you know that they are the largest phylum insects form 70% of all the animals on this earth so they must have some characters which make them successful invaders so three basic characters are there which make them successful on this earth that is cuticle appendages that is jointed appendages and chitinous wings so they do not die easily they have high reproduction capacity next we have some important examples that is apis apis is also known as honey bee from which we get honey which has various medicinal purposes then we have is bombyx which is known as silk worm which produces natural silk then we have is lecithin that are known as lac insects from which lac is produced to form bangles and other materials we'll be studying the details about these three members of the arthropoda and the use detail in detail in the 12th session then we have anopheles culex and aedes these are the vectors all these three are mosquitoes which are actually the vectors for various diseases for example anopheles i told you they are actually the vectors for malaria there where the plasmodium is actually transferred from transferred into the humans to cause malaria next is culex and the last one we have is aedes so culex actually causes the disease in the humans that is so culex is vector for encephalitis just now in the last two three phyla means just before the two phyla we started this encephalitis or filariasis yes that worm is carried by these culex mosquitoes and they cause this voucheria disease or filariasis next is aedes so it transfers the dengue insect or dengue it causes dengue or it is a vector for dengue disease next is locusta which are commonly known as locust and they had a great attack recently in the corona we all know in india especially in the northern regions then we have is limulus that is commonly known as king crab and it is a living fossil king crab is actually a living fossil because most of the members of this group are actually extinct now next we have some important examples in the form of pictures the first one we have is locust second is butterfly third one is scorpion and fourth one is prawn which are important for the exams and now we have the next phylum that is mollusca so mollusca is the second largest phylum which comes after the arthropoda both in the positions of the phylum and in the number of organisms or diversity too next is they can be terrestrial or aquatic with organ system level of organization we are having the same terms again and again so we don't have to discuss them again we just need to recall that yes this is phylum are are having this organ system level of organization the members will be triploblastic with bilateral symmetry they have they are coelomate animals means they have eucelom they are eucelomate they have true coelom present in them they have calcareous shell so the body is very delicate soft and to prevent the soft body they have shell which is mainly made up of calcium carbonate and some other proteins 
Next is they have unsegmented body. The complete body is divided into three parts that is head, muscular foot which helps for locomotion and visceral hump which actually contains all the organs of the body. Then they have the mantle which is for, uh, mantle formed by soft spongy layer of skin over the hump. They have feather like gills in the mantle cavity and sensory tentacles on anterior head region. Open circulatory system is there and cephalopods, which is a group of mollusca, they have closed circulatory system. For excretion, they have this specific type of kidney that is metanetric kidney, which is also known as Caber's organ or organ of Bojanus. They have file like rasping organ for feeding, which is known as redula. And usually they are dioecious, means male and female mollusca are different. And oviparous means they will lay eggs. The development is indirect type, means larva will be there. And different types of larva are there, like trochophore larva is there, glochidium larva is there. So these are the larvas of mollusca. Then we have some important examples like Pella, which is known as apple snail. Then we have a spring tada, which is known as pearl oyster, from which actually the pearls, the natural pearls, which are very expensive, very precious, they are actually formed by these pearl oysters. Next is sepia, which is known as cuttlefish. Then we have a loligo, that is known as squid. Next we have is octopus. Octopus we all must have seen. Some of us might be having octopus as a toy in our young stage when we were the kids. And then we have is aplysia which is commonly known as sea hair. And then is dentalium which is known as tusk shell. And the last example we have got is fetopleura which is commonly known as chitin. Now, next we have these two important pictures as an example. The first one is of Pila, that is apple snail, and the second one is octopus. These are again important pictures for the exams. Now we have the next Pila, that is the Echinodermata. Now, these all members which are included in the Echinodermata, they all are marine. All the members of the Echinodermata group are actually marine. So you can mark this point important. All are marine. A number of, number of times this point is used in the questions too. Next is the mangers are bottom dwellers. Means they will survive, they will stay at the bottom of the aquatic, surf, uh, aquatic bodies and the marine bodies. So they are known as bottom dwellers. They usually don't come on the surface of the water. They have the endoskeleton made up of calcareous ossicles, means bones like structures made up of calcium. They have organ system level of organization and now coming to the symmetry, this is one important point which you need to remember. The larva will have bilateral symmetry but once larva converts into the adult, the bilateral symmetry converts into radial symmetry. So you need to remember what type of symmetry is found in larva and what type of symmetry is found in the adults. Triploblastic silomate animals with complete digestive system. Mouth is present on the ventral side or we can say the lower side whereas the anus is present on the dorsal side or the upper side. So these positions are important. This is lower, ventral or lower and anus on the dorsal or upper side present. They have water vascular system. Now, water vascular system is found in Echinodermata. I told about this system or this that we'll be studying another system in Echinodermata when we studied about the porifera. This water vascular system plays many functions like locomotion, respiration, capture and transport of food. So, so many functions are there. Excretory system is absent. Open circulatory system is there. They are dioecious means males and females are separate. Fertilization is usually external. They have a free swimming larva. 
power of regeneration is seen in the members they show autotomy autotomy means they will just release a part of their body and will regenerate it okay so autotomy means releasing or breaking any part of the body usually to scare the prey predator sorry then to scare the predators evisceration actually the pronunciation is evisceration to where they just give out their internal organs remember what happens in ortomy and what happens in evisceration now these are some important characteristic features of echinodermata next we have is the examples of the echinodermata that is asterias commonly known as starfish echinus commonly known as sea urchin antidon commonly known as sea lily cucumeria commonly known as sea cucumber one of the commonly asked examples in the exam then we have is ophiura which is commonly known as brittle star then we have two diagrams or pictures and so the first one we have got is asterias that is the first picture and the second picture is of brittle star which you need to remember now we have one more phyla the last phyla of the non chordates that is hemichordata so guys this hemichordata is of another phyla which is now included in the non chordates but earlier these hemichordates were placed in the sub phyla of chordata because they have one structure that is similar to the chordates that is they have the stomochord which is equivalent to the notochords so what is stomochord stomochord is a notochord like structure which is found in their buccal cavity stomochord since it is found in the buccal cavity is also known as buccal diverticula these hemichordates are actually the worm like marine animals and these are fossorial animals they have organ system level of organization with triploblastic nature and bilateral symmetry these are coelomate animals means true coelom is present in the mammals and the body is cylindrical as you can see in this picture the body is cylindrical with three parts present in it that is the proboscis collar and trunk is there in the members so what is the proboscis this first part is the proboscis this is proboscis then this is collar and the remaining part is trunk and then we have the tail the trunk is the part three parts are there it has open circulatory system and it has gills for respiration coming to excretion it has a single glomerulus means one glomerulus is there and it is known as proboscis gland so this is one important point for hemichordata here they are monoecious or we can say the unisexual ones the sexes are separate dioecious or unisexual ones external fertilization is found and they have indirect development this indirect development includes a larva that is known as stornaria larva which is similar to bipinnaria larva bipinnaria larva is larva of echinodermata and this larva is having similarity with the torontornaria in the embryonic development so bipinnaria is a larva of echinodermata and the stornaria larva of hemichordata is similar to this bipinnaria larva of echinodermata now we have two important examples the first one is balenoglossus whose picture is given here and the second one is secoglossus so this is all about the hemichordata we have we need to discuss in the next video we will be discussing about the chordates now since we are ending here non chordate and we'll be starting chordates in the next video this is how you can remember that hemichordates are actually the connecting link between non chordates and chordates
types. So because they have some characters similar to chordates and some with the non-chordates, they are the connecting link. So here we are done with the non-chordates completely and please like this video, subscribe my channel if you haven't and share with your friends too.